happiness and opportunity for me to be able on this occasion when I'm present as the husband of Lady Cripp to say a few words to you. I want first of all to congratulate you upon the fine record of the High Walker Yard during this war. You here share uh, throughout the world that great reputation for craftsmanship <coughs> which the fine side has gained over a very long period of time. This yard has produced many fine ships, starting with HMS Malaya, a gift to the Royal Navy from the Federated Malay States, the construction of which was started in 1910. Then uh, followed, not long after, that uh, terrible period of trade depression which hit the northeast coast of England like a blizzard and brought with it all the tragedy and suffering that depressed and disgraced our country in the following years. In 1931, the late Sir Charles Craven took the then bold step of laying the keel of a luxury liner, the Monarch of Bermuda, in this yard. That was really the rebirth of the activities of the yard, and it brought together once again a fine team of skilled craftsmen from whose labors we have benefited so greatly during the course of the last few years. And you followed the good and bad fortune of the ships you built but always those who sailed in them have known that they could put absolute confidence and reliance in the skill with which you had built them. And it hasn't been altogether a comfortable time to work uh, throughout the war. There have been plenty of anxieties and worries besides those which have been caused by the German attack. Now we've come out of the dark night of war and we are greeting the dawn of peace and the post-war period. You and I are wondering what the future will bring. And one thing that we are both determined upon is that it shall not bring back again to the northeast coast the suffering and the despondency that we experienced in the years between the two wars. This government is certainly determined to do all that lies within their power to avoid such a recurrence. But we must remember that we have emerged from the war not into easy and prosperous times, but into times that call for all our patient effort. If we are to reconstruct our country and take our place once more as one of the great leading industrial nations of the world, commerce or produce that volume of goods of all kinds that we need to sustain our standard of living. The dreams and the desires 
the better standards, the finer social services, the better education for our children will all disappear unless we can bring them to reality by our own hard work. How are those conditions which make it possible for you to give of your best in your work? But we must and can only rely upon you for that best. And I say this not particularly to you here, who have done so splendidly in the war, but to all our people throughout the country, who have shared with you in that effort. Politicians and statesmen can create the right background, the right setting, but you are the actors and actresses who must play the part in this great drama of our industrial production. I do therefore ask you and all the workers of our country to give us the power, the power of your arms and your brains to realize that happier and better future for which we all so long. The harder you apply yourselves to the job in hand, the greater will be the certainty of that growing prosperity in our country. The one thing that can and will of certainty defeat our chances is, if any of us are to slack or to sit back, because we are expecting someone else to hand us prosperity upon a plate. It won't happen like that. That's not the way of the world. We shall only get what we value if we work for it with all our might. You know how and why victory was won in this war. Because every one of us gave unstintingly of our best, despite all personal discomfort. That is the only way in which we shall win the peace. May this launching of the Hercules today be but a prelude to a long and unending series of launchings from this yard carrying your skill and your fame to the four quarters of the globe. And may we each one, by our own effort, help to make certain that distress and suffering never again come to Tyneside.